this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Doll. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here to have a bit of a play around and make some of these little origami um, kind of like faux envelope flip outs, I'm going to call them. Um, yeah, I stumbled across these and I thought, oh, they look fantastic for our journals. Now I have to say, it took me a few times of making this to actually be able to, to make it. Um, but yeah, that's probably just me. So let's hope that I can remember, but I did just, just make them and, um, yeah, so hopefully I can remember. Um, but I thought they would just be so, so cute. So let's have a go. Now, what I've brought along is just some coffee dyed paper and some food coloured papers. And then I've also got a couple of decorative ones that again have been coffee dyed on the back that I thought we could play around with in a minute and see about making some decorative ones. But let's start by just doing a coffee dyed one. Um, you know, because hopefully that's going to be nice and straightforward and in my capabilities, I'm going to have to obviously fathom out which way to do the patterned paper for, um, yeah, the patterned paper ones. But let's start with this. So what you're going to do is take your paper. Now, this is just regular A4 size paper and I'm going to fold it straight in half like that. You're going to then open it back out and then you're going to fold in your four corners right into this um you know center line now i have to say the first couple that i did i did not fold in enough i thought oh you know they're probably close enough they weren't close enough and then subsequently my kind of um you know mechanism didn't really work so i think it's quite important that you get your um flaps you know right up to that um you know folded line as much as you possibly can okay so like that Okie dokie. So it's a bit like making paper aeroplanes so far. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to obviously do the exact same thing at the other end. So that one in there, like that. Okie doke. And then this one here in at the other end. So, whoops. Like that. Okie dokie. Right that down so you're going to end up with a little piece of paper kind of similar looking to this then what you're going to do is fold your flat edges again into that center line like that okay so straight across and then squish them down and you're going to do that on both sides like that so they kind of meet one another okie dokie and then just literally squish them down. Now, all you're going to do then is fold over your little flaps. Now, again, this is probably, um, you know, maybe a, a slight area where you can kind of vary it, but I kind of fold it over slightly more than just the triangle, if you see what I mean. You could do just the triangle, but really I think you want to go slightly more than just the triangle, like that. So you've got just a little bit of an overlap at the edges, okay? So like that, and then of course squish that down. And then we're going to just do the same thing at the other end, like that, okay? And then we just, again, squish that down. Oops, squish that down at the other end. Oh dear. Oh, already my folding's not going so well. And that's what you're ending up with. Then you're going to turn it over so you've got the kind of, you know, plain side facing you. And then what you're going to do is fold this section over here. And what you want to do is fold it nearly to where the point is, if that makes sense. So not quite, but nearly. And you're going to tuck this bit into here. So just unfold it like that and tuck this side or this end into itself like that, okay? A little bit fiddly, but you know, not not too, too bad because you know, I would not be able to do it if it was too bad. So into itself like that. And then what you can do is take your flap. Uh oh, this is where I have folded it too far in. So hold on. Yeah, obviously it was a bit too overambitious and folded it too far in. So we're just going to move that down a bit. Like that. Because what you want to ultimately do 
is fold this whole section then into this section here, if that makes sense. So, you know, you can kind of like judge it by eye, um, but don't squish it down too hard because if you need to change it, you can then kind of change it without too many kind of fold lines going on. But this whole section then will then squish in to here like that so you've got then like a sort of duck's duck's beak kind of poking out so like that let me just oops, squish that in up there oh I can't I get it to go in properly okay like that and then you can squish the whole thing down obviously with your bone folder or your you know scissor handles whichever whichever you're using like that and like that and then if you pull your flap whoops this is where this now is not really working and it obviously it did work perfectly just now for the one that I made as a prototype but of course now it's not not now wanting to work for the purposes of the video oh, right what you do is you pull out your flap like that and the whole thing then pulls out and obviously if this was just tucked in rather than glued down you'd actually be able to open the whole thing out and have the whole thing as journaling space so you know they're quite nifty aren't they and um yeah quite a lot of kind of um you know journaling space tucked within there just going to fold this up again so like that and then this whole section, like I say, is going to then fold in to there. I'm just going to squish that down first and it might be a bit easier then to, to actually get it tucked in. So the whole thing then tucks in like that. Oops. Like that. I mean, yeah, they're just a little bit fiddly, but once they're kind of in, then they are in. And then, of course, I thought you could just decorate the flaps up with maybe like the smallest of the Tim Holtz paper dolls or, you know, maybe some butterflies. I'm just seeing whether I've got a butterfly handy here. Um, oh, my vintage circles. They would look pretty cool on the on the flaps as well. So, yeah, loads of different ways that you could decorate these up, which I just think would look really, really pretty. Just a little rosebud there. I have to say, I'm really quite liking this little chair, you know, from the um, vintage circles. So let's just get that one glued down on there. So all I'm going to do is just apply hot glue just to this pointy bit and just to the top of there. And then that goes on there like that. Okay. And then the whole thing again like, you know, like I say, it just pulls out. So, I'm going to make another one in a second which will hopefully hopefully go a bit smoother than this one. I don't seem to have made a very good job of this one. But hopefully it's kind of worked okay-ish enough for you to sort of see where I'm heading with this. Um and like I say, you know, after we've made a couple more plain ones, and I'm a little bit better at, at folding them and doing them. Um, we'll try and do one with the patterned paper because I think that would be really, really, really pretty. So that's that one. Right, let's make another one. And I've got this food coloured paper here in the green. So let's do this one now. So we are folding it in half in the first instance along the lengthways. Okay, so in half along the lengthways. Now I'm pretty sure that kind of any difficulties come, you know, if your measure it, uh, your folding is just even slightly out, because you know origami type projects, and that's what this is, they're actually quite precise, aren't they? And you know, if you kind of out by just a millimetre or two, they maybe will muck up your, you know, your future folding, and then inevitably your, you know, um, tucking in and things like that. So again, take your flaps, or you know your corners and make your flaps like this so into that center line as much as you possibly can like that okay squish that down so I will just do this end now because we're going to be doing it obviously at both ends so like that okay. 
And then this one. Like that. Okey And then here, this one here. Like that. Okay. And then just squish the whole lot down. Like that. So you're left with this weird shape um, piece and then you're going to fold your straight edge like we said before right in to that middle centre line like that. Okay. Squish that down with your scissor handles or your bone folder like that. And then exactly the same here, centre line, fold it down like that. Okay, right. Then what you're left with is obviously your little ends. So you're going to take your first one in. You just want to, like I say, fold it over slightly so that you can tuck this in. Now I'm going to do, do this slightly less this time and see whether this you know, works out a bit better. And then the other end, you're going to again fold it in, but you know, slightly more there, like that. So, okay, like that. Turn your piece over and then fold your first flap, the one that you're going to be tucking everything into, like that. Uh, to be honest, actually, I'm now thinking, yeah, I'm now thinking I've maybe should be doing this the other way. So perhaps my one that I've tucked in slightly more should be my non-pulley one. So let's try that. I mean, we're just kind of ironing out the um, the kinks here, really. Because, like I say, I mean, they're sort of, you know, they are straightforward, but it is really all in the, you know, the folding mechanism, really, that you just want to kind of play around with and find out what is the way that works best. I mean, unfortunately, the videos that I saw, well, you know, the ones that are, um, I mean, it's probably aimed at children more because they're kind of more like kiddie crafts, but... You know where it's kind of got the music playing and they do it in sort of fast time just showing you quickly how to do it and you know it's fantastic for obviously giving you the ideas but you don't necessarily kind of then hear you know have they left slightly more have they done it less you know that kind of stuff so yeah we're just kind of ironing out the kinks and finding out what works best here so this one what i've done is i've taken the one that i've folded slightly more on each end and i've actually tucked that one in this one I have left pretty much at the edges, if you see what I mean. And then I'm going to try folding this in. So it's not folded in thirds, it's slightly less, if you see what I mean, on this, this side. And then I'm hoping that this is going to give me a bit more room to do my tucking. So let's see. Oops. Take that up to my folded line. Like that. Okay. So, yeah, not too bad, to be honest. Not too bad. I mean, definitely, definitely, you know, it's um, a bit of a trial and error as to where exactly your folds are going to go. But I do think they're worth persevering with because they are very sweet, aren't they? And, um, yeah, I think they're, you know, they're quite a nice little pull-out type piece. So let me just see what I've got in here. Oh, the other thing that would look quite nice on here are bows. Um, let me just see whether I've got any bows that would be sort of the right colours. Uh, no, I can't really see any. Got a bright red one, and of course that's not going to be quite right, is it? Um, got some flowers. They're probably too massive. They're quite big, aren't they? Hmm. Yep. I don't know, a little bit on the big side. Uh, honestly, I know I say it so often, but we have all these things that just never still have the right thing, do we? I mean, how can that possibly be? Um, hmm. Right, got some other bows and butterflies and things like that down at the bottom here. Again, I've just got massive ones or tiny ones. So and I've got that butterfly, that's quite pretty. 
yeah, that's quite pretty to be honest. So, I mean, it is having to tuck in, you know, alongside the flat, but you know, I don't mind that. So I'll just put a blob of glue at the end as well. That will go into there and like that. Oops, try and just get that a bit straighter, like that. Okay, let's just pull this one out. Oops. Yeah, come out. Mm. Now glue this in. Oh my goodness, what is going on? Now glued it in, I think. Oh no, I haven't. Right. Okay, so yeah. Right, probably ideal to uh, glue your little flap, you know, piece in before you tuck it in because, yeah, once you tuck it in, it's not then very easy. Right. Okay, and then just hook that into there like that. Okay. Oops. Like that. So, yeah, I mean, they're quite nice because as well, you know, you've got a whole piece of paper there, um, you know, for journaling, but the whole thing has actually folded down pretty flat. So, you know, you're not going to bulk your journal out, but you are going to get a whole sheet of paper there for journaling, which is pretty cool, isn't it? So let's do one in the patterned paper. Now, need to focus a little bit because my mind goes completely blank as to which side which side is going to be showing. So the side that's going to be showing is the side with all the folds, if that makes sense. So, hmm, right, let's think, let's think. Okay, right, so we're gonna fold this in. So I'm doing it with the pattern side out at the moment, unless it then pans out that I've done it wrong. So, and yeah, I would not be surprised at all. It's quite likely, quite likely that I've done it wrong. So fold that in like that, okie dokie. Then you're going to take this, open it out and fold your little triangles at every single corner. So one there, one there. Turn it round and do your other two. Like that. Okay. Right, like that. Then you're going to take your flat edge, fold that straight up into that middle section, like that, okay? And then you're going to fold your next one, again, straight into the middle section on the opposite side. So you've got your two your two straight edges meeting one another basically so like that okay okie dokie right squish that all down around all my edges now still trying to decide whether actually i would be better off not having you know where i've left these space kind of gaps so yeah should we try it without those and see how that pans out so we'll have this one like this so it's just folded straight along basically the problem is i think when this is folded over that's going to be flapping around a bit hmm. i think it does need to be in just very 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 slightly so yeah because otherwise it's just going to be you know not quite tucked in enough if that makes sense so again just like we did in the last one i have t tucked that in or folded that over so slightly over if that makes sense just so that this is going to actually tuck into the sides rather than be a flapping triangle okay you do need that little tiny overlap because otherwise your triangle is just literally flapping around there. So again, turning it over like that and then this one is going to be our, you know, foldy piece where we're obviously folding it into. So bringing it down, folding it over like that, squish it down. OK, 
Okay. Straight across at the bottom. And then you're going to take your little flap and we're going to just tuck that in. And I'm just going to do my fold marks or my, yeah, my fold line after I've tucked it in. So take it to where I want it to tuck into. So push it up into, you know, basically as far as I can up to the end. If that makes sense. Like that. And then press the whole thing down once I've got it in place. So like that. Squish that and squish, squish that and that. Squish the whole thing. <laughs> okay. And then that's it. And then I can glue my little piece on to the end. So, yeah, again, let me just have a rummage through here. Oh, what are these? I've got my ladies. Oh, she's probably a bit, a bit ginormous. I mean, I could cut that top piece off of her. Mm. Right, okay, let's just cut that top piece off. Like that. And have her as my pulley. So what I'm going to do is actually for this one, I think I'm going to unfold it to actually glue her on because I think that might be easier. I'll just pull that out and then just glue her on there. Oops. Like that, so. Put my glue there, bit of glue here. Okay like that okay press that in okie dokie and then the whole thing will then just slot in and tuck oops tuck into here like that so I mean she's dangling down a bit um you know it's not like she's actually slotting in, you know with the size of the envelope but she looks quite pretty doesn't she on there so yeah I think that's quite a nice quite a nice look to be honest so yeah let's do one more with another sheet of the patterned paper so because that looks pretty doesn't it so take this fold it in let's see if we can do this one without any any mistakes or errors oh, I don't know will I manage to pull it off probably not so squish it down Take your triangles, squish them down either end like that. Okay, one, two, whoops, like that. And then the other one, or sorry, not the other one, but the other end. Um, squish that down like that. And then like that. Okie dokie, right. So my ends are nicely squished in and, you know, looking good. Going to take my middle sections, fold them straight into the, to the middle, funnily enough. And then, yep, squish this one straight into that side's middle, like that. Okie dokie. And then what we're going to do is fold our ends over. Now, if you remember, we said we definitely need to have a little tiny bit of an overlap. So, yep, let's just put that tiny bit of overlap in there, like that. And then just open this out and fold it in so that our triangle is inside that flap, like that. And then this end, we're just going to fold in. This side, you know, this end, sorry, we don't really need to have an overlap. This side is then perfectly fine to fold in line with the edges. So, yeah, kind of, you know, yeah, just through doing this a few times now, it's become more apparent that actually it's this end that you need to have tucked in. This end can then be flapping around. So we then fold this in like that okay squish that down 
just take my scissor handles to squish all of that. Okay, and then our other end, we're just going to then put in to here. Oops, like that. Now, like I say, just with the other ones, or just like with the other ones, haven't made a fold here or anything. I'm going to gauge where I want that or where I need it to be, and then I will squish it and make the fold line. So you want to have it as close to that edge as you possibly can, like that. Oops, like that. And then you can obviously squish that down, like that. Okay, so again, taking my scissor handles, like I say, I mean, you can obviously use a bone folder for this. My scissor handles are just, you know, they were here on the desk. Um, I mean, my bone folder's just there in my organiser, but yeah, it wasn't quite as convenient as these. So that is my little envelope. So again, let's just find something cute to put on the end of here. Um, I mean, I did say at the beginning, didn't I, about the Tim Holtz people, because I thought they're quite cute on here. And just another really, really fun way to use them, isn't it? So let's just put her on there. Okay, so she's one of the smaller size people, obviously. Um, but yeah, just kind of works perfectly on that little flap, doesn't she? So we'll just put her there. Yeah, I mean, I actually think that's a really nice way to use them, to be honest. Um, and, you know, just love finding new ways to use the Tim Holtz people, really. Um, you know, because otherwise I end up with, like, all the smaller size ones, especially, just left and, you know, not really being used. So this is just a brilliant... A brilliant little way to actually use them so she then pulls out Oops. I mean I'm saying all this and it's now just looking really awful but honestly when I wasn't filming they all kind of like worked really much better than this she pulls out obviously you've got journaling space here depending on whether or not you've used patterned paper too much and then of course when you open it out or turn it over and open it out you've got the whole thing as journaling space there like that and then you can fold the whole thing back and just pop her or pop pop your flat back in this case it's her pop that back into the thingy me bob the little flap like that so I mean obviously the more you open these out and you know fold them in the better they're going to be because you know they're going to then just naturally want to squish back down as they were um, you know, obviously they're a little bit resistant to the being squished at the moment. The other thing, I don't know whether I actually mentioned this at the beginning, but I did use copy paper thickness. I definitely, definitely wouldn't probably recommend using, um, you know, anything thicker than copy paper because A, they're going to bulk out quite a lot. You know, they're very flat and nice and, you know, compact in the copy paper. They would bulk out quite a lot. But the other thing is you're going to struggle to make all of those different folds and things if it's thicker paper. So, um, yeah, I would definitely recommend just using the copy paper thickness. Um, and, yeah, just, you know, just play around and have some fun with them. I've lost my little man. Oh, there he is. That I was going to put on my first one. So, yeah, I'm just going to pop him on there. I mean, like I say, I just think these... Tim Holtz people the small ones you know that like I say I've sometimes struggled to actually find other things to do with the small ones or you know ways to use up the small ones this is just a perfect perfect little way to use them and then what you could do is actually you could kind of hook these onto a pocket so instead of even tucking them into a pocket I mean I haven't got anything really here that's like a pocket but let's say this was one you could just kind of like hook them over like that so it's not actually kind of like, you know, placed into a pocket, but it's held into the pocket like that, which how cool is that? I mean, they are super, super lovely, aren't they? And actually everything that I've used for the, you know, the flap closure pieces, everything I've used would work like that. So including like the butterfly, you know, that would also work. So it's just a little way of hooking them onto your pockets and actually making them really look quite pretty. Of course, you could probably decorate all of these little bits and things like that. The problem is when you open them out and you want to journal on it, 
you know I think probably you would want to keep them very flat so you've got put you know proper journal in paper or you know sheet of paper to journal on properly um but again you know the choice is yours and kind of completely up to you but yeah I mean I just really hope you that you like them I think they're just really 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 fun and um yeah just you know couldn't resist having a go and um yeah like I say a little bit on the fiddly side but once you actually kind of get going with them I think actually they're they're okay and um yeah they're pretty fun to make and a good way to use up some of those small Tim Holtz people and um yeah just a different alternative for your junk journals so I hope you like them thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow thanks then bye